reliability issue is not an issue, right? It's definitely going to work because it's the same program on both machines and it's just running on two different platforms. But in that situation, that's fine. We can definitely share files in that situation and everything's going to work because it's the same program. And like I said, I'm always a little bit leery of this so-and-so compatible stuff. Uh, and, and, you know, you just need to decide for your situation. You know, if, if what you're doing with, with Office is compatible between Star Office and Microsoft Office, then, you know, maybe you should just leave well enough alone and let people use what they got and, and do it that way. Uh, you know, it's up to you. You just have to decide what's best for you. You'll, there'll be people out there that'll say, well, Star Office is so inferior to Microsoft Office, and I'm not going to get into that. You just have to decide, is this good enough for what you want to do? And if it is, then you can make your decisions appropriately. Uh, let me back up a couple levels here. Um, again to the productivity tools and you know there's fax tools there's financial tools like little accounting tools uh, one that's in there that's noteworthy is GNU cash uh, and again it's just like your little personal accountant uh, let's back up again uh, there's fax tools there's mathematical graphing tools and once you start getting into scientific applications uh, you know Linux I think beats Microsoft Windows hands down here uh, there's more definitely more scientific and, and mathematical tools available on Linux than there is on Windows they're just you know more superior Linux machines are generally, uh, you know, it, Linux is just usually more robust and, and it just handles those you know, number crunching type of applications much better than the Windows machines do. Uh, so, you know, when you go into some like university and you go into like the physics department, you'll see more Linux machines there than you'll see in the history department or the English department, just because the demands that the physicists and the mathematicians place on computers is a little more so than the, than the history people and the, and the English people and stuff like that. Okay, so, so if that's your game, is science and scientific applications, Linux is going to be a good choice and there's going to be tons of software there for Linux that, that the Windows people will be envious of. All right, and uh, you know, let's back up another level from productivity tools. Let's go to network and internet tools. And under there, you can see a bunch of various things: uh, FTP clients, uh, mail tools, server tools, web browser tools. Uh, let's go under server tools. And under server tools, you can see all sorts of stuff: web server statistics tools, and actually just web servers. And under web servers, uh, the first thing here is Apache. And this this is the stuff. I mean, Apache web server running under Linux is probably the most stable uh, web server environment. That you could that you could have there just isn't anything better when I worked at that internet company we had Debian Linux we had Apache web server running on that all this free software and the stuff just never never crashed I mean it just ran all the time served millions and millions of hits all, you know a day and it was just it was just bomb proof um, and you can see here there's been some survey that you know 58 percent or so of the web servers on the internet are using Apache so more than all other web servers combined right I mean that that's a tall claim and this is free software this is just it just it's just killer uh, and there's all sorts of uh, you know tools or add-ons to Apache to do various things and, and it's very easy to use very easy to set up and, and like I said this is just the, the, the stuff uh, and if we go back further uh, all the way back to the top again you'll see you know all sorts of stuff in here just browse around for what you need uh, and there's almost surely some Linux program out there for it and like I said the only time you're ever gonna run into a problem is that when you try to interact with like Microsoft stuff and in that case you know you just need to find software that, that bridges that gap that runs on both platforms and then you'll be fine. Time to wrap up our installation planning nugget. In, in this video we talked about uh, you know basically the software side of things and in the next nugget we'll cover uh, installation planning from the hardware perspective. So first we talked about the various Linux distributions that you could choose from uh, you know Red Hat or Debian or, or Slackware or whatever and, and you know tried to give you an idea of what each one was good for and what, what it was notorious for uh, and you know use that search tool on Linux.org to help you find the one that meets your specific needs. And then we talked about uh, software for Linux, like, you know, the various office applications and mathematical applications, that kind of stuff, and just showed you where to get them at linuxsoftware.org, and there's certainly other places you can get software for Linux. Uh, you know, just do a search in your favorite uh, internet search engine and look for Linux software in some, of some variety, and you'll find all sorts of hits out there. And finally, I just tried to wrap up and give you a little idea of what goes on with the licenses in Linux, what, how, what, what the, what's up with those free licenses, what do they really mean, and you don't really have to worry too much about this as a, as a system administrator. It's mostly for developers. Well, I hope you found this nugget informative and thanks again for viewing.